New York City skyline has been captured in hundreds of images, films, and television broadcasts, but it never ceases to astonish the first time you see it. New York City is a hot spot of spectacular architecture with streets lined up with the tall buildings that soar into the sky. But hold your horses, because despite the number of incredible skyscrapers in New York, it does not stop there, because there are more skyscrapers to come by 2030. For today's video, we will talk about some of the upcoming skyscrapers in New York City by 2030. But before that, make sure to subscribe to this channel and never miss out on the videos we upload. Now let's get started. First on the list is Tower 5th. A 96-story office tower in Midtown Manhattan has been planned by New York City developer Harry McClough and worldwide architectural firm Gensler, which might become the city's largest skyscraper by roof height. When McClough submitted the preliminary application to the Department of City Planning last week, the New York Times obtained details of the proposal and dubbed it as Tower 5th. This will be the second tallest structure in the Western Hemisphere, standing just north of St. Patrick's Cathedral and east of 5th Avenue between 51st and 52nd Streets. The 1.3 million gros square foot tower, which rises 1,556 feet above Manhattan, sets a new standard for how a super tall structure meets the street and interacts with its neighbors. The public gallery on the ground level spans the full block, framing views of St. Patrick's Cathedral while extending the civic realm within the building footprint, guiding visitors to stores, a dining hall, and an auditorium. The city's highest observatory, located at the top of the tower, offers unparalleled views and an array of unique experiential, cultural, entertainment opportunities within a public observatory. The office levels provide a total of 960,000 square feet of tenant space and wellness services. Tower 5th is clad in a cutting-edge, energy-efficient closed cavity facade system that minimizes solar heat gain by more than 70%. It will be the first time such a system is deployed in North America. Next on the list is Park Avenue or Commodore Tower. On the site of Donald Trump's former Grand Hyatt Hotel in New York City, architectural firm Skidmore Owings & Merrill has announced plans for an 83-story super-tall tower. The mixed-use tower, known as 175 Park Avenue, will stand 1,646 feet tall and will house office and retail space as well as new 500-room Hyatt Hotel. Grand Hyatt New York, which was established in 1919 as the Commodore Hotel and purchased by Trump in 1980, will be replaced with a glass and steel tower. For his first big construction project in the city, the former U.S. president refurbished the hotel and encased it in black glass. Skidmore Owings and Merrill has released fresh images for Project Commodore, a 1,600-foot super-tall office tower that will be the largest in Midtown East and the Western Hemisphere by roof height. The 83-story skyscraper, known as 175 Park Avenue, is being constructed by RXR Realty and TF Cornerstone and will replace the 26-story Grand Hyatt New York. The building will have 500 Hyatt hotel rooms across 453,000 square feet on the upper floors, 10,000 square feet of retail space on the ground and cellar levels, and 2.1 million square feet of office space. The Grand Hyatt New York is now designated for 860,000 square feet of development and is bordered on the south by 42nd Street, the east by Lexington Avenue and Chrysler Building, the north by 420 Lexington Avenue and the west by Grand Central Terminal. If authorized in its current form, the 2.2 million square foot structure would bring an 83-story tower to Midtown, sandwiching the neighboring Grand Central Terminal between it and the super-tall one Vanderbilt. The mixed-use tower will have 2.1 million square feet of Class A office space, a 500-room Hyatt hotel spanning 453,000 square feet on the top floors, 10,000 square feet of ground and cellar level shops, and a number of planned transit links and enhancements. 
Grand Central Terminal and the Grand Central 42nd Street subway station will also be upgraded, as well as a new hall and a connectivity between the Metro North Railroad platforms and the Long Island Railroad's East Side Access Terminal. The building's sheer height and size are made possible by 620,000 square feet of transferable air rights from Grand Central Terminal and 770,000 square feet of additional floor area for future subway enhancements. The height of Grand Central Terminal's winged statue of Mercury and the cornice line are perfectly in line with parts of the base. The metal panels that will cover the steel superstructure have a texture similar to the columns that run along the main elevation of the train station between the arched glass windows. Following a public assessment this spring and the completion of the uniform land use review process by the end of 2021, demolition of the Grand Hyatt New York superstructure is slated to commence next year and last 18 months. 175 Park Avenue is expected to be completed in 2030. Moving forward, we also have the Affirmation Tower. The massive tower, which will be built on one of Manhattan's last few acres of underdeveloped land, will provide residents even another reason to travel to the Hudson River. After all, the Affirmation Tower will have a skating rink, at least two hotels, an entertainment complex, and a rooftop cafe and ballroom, so there's nothing someone with an ending aching curiosity couldn't accomplish here. It's a 1,663-foot tall building that extends five times, giving the upper levels a much greater appearance than the lower ones. To put it another way, it's like inverting a regular building and supporting it with the narrowest component. Trust appears to be the word of the game, and the Affirmation Tower is a suitable name for someone who requires a lot of faith to step through those doors, knowing that it will always remain. Two hotels office space, an ice skating rink, and an observation deck will be housed in the structure. Assume it progresses from concept to construction. In that case, the Affirmation Tower will become one of the Western Hemisphere's highest structures, needing the participation of at least 30,000 New Yorkers during a six-year period. This will result in the creation of at least 15,000 employment, generating more than $5 billion in income tax for the city and state over the next 30 years. Peter Ward, the former president of New York's hotel and motel trades, told Design Boom that the project will provide a much-needed economic boost to the city's labor and tourism economy. The Affirmation Tower Manhattan's highest structure to be, is set to be planned and developed by a star-studded team. The development team includes Sir David Ajaye, a world-renowned architect who designed the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C. The Peebles Corporation, a 40-year-old real estate firm led by one of the country's largest developers, the McKissack Group, a century-old company and the country's oldest minority women-owned design construction firm, and Exact Capital, which specializes in residential development. The Whitcoff Group's founder, real estate investor Stephen Charles Whitcoff, is also a member of the group. In fact, as stated by Ward, this project will provide $4.4 billion of new economic output per year, bringing thousands of jobs in the construction, design and development, as well as millions of people across the globe who will be excited to see this iconic skyscraper. The project's diverse team has received support from the African-American business and civic communities, as well as African-American churches across the city. Last, but definitely not the least, is 350 Park Tower. Another super tall could be coming to Midtown East thanks to a potential joint venture between two developers. According to The Real Deal, Vernado Realty Trust and Rudin Management Company may pair up to build a 1,450-foot office tower at 350 Park Avenue. A leaked project brochure shows images of the proposed tower, which show a glassy structure with a number of setbacks that would allow for outdoor terraces and different sized floor plates. 
According to the brochure, 350 Park Avenue would include 1.68 million square feet of office space spread over 70 stories with more than 50,000 square feet of tenant amenity space. An executive port cashier, outdoor terraces, art club, fitness facility, auditorium, all-day and fine dining area, and a sky bar on the 53rd floor are among the amenities provided. The design for 350 Park Avenue would be a startling departure from both the historical and contemporary stylings that currently dominate the Manhattan skyline, with a striking mix of classical massing proportions and an ultra-modern exterior evocative of Foster's Hearst Tower. Built in 1960, this 30-story, 538,000-square-foot tower spans the entire west side of Park Avenue, reaching 201 feet between 51st and 52nd streets. Investment bank China International Capital Corp. and executive search agency Egon Zender are among the office tenants, while Fidelity Investments occupies retail space. In January 2015, Square Mile Capital agreed to consolidate its offices at 350 Park Avenue, tripling their space to 21,000 square feet and subleasing the whole 15th floor from Ziff Brothers Investments. So, which among the New York skyscrapers by 2030 are you looking forward to? Which among these will radically change the skyline after many years? Let me know your answers by commenting them down below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you obtained interesting information from this, make sure to like and share it with your friends. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell to never miss a video we will upload next. If you want more videos like this, make sure to check out our other videos by visiting our channel. Again, this is the Lux Luxury Channel. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.